any news coverages of the YPG or PYD, they always focus on women. And when they uh, have an extended analysis of the organization, they always use pictures, some visuals, which include some women character on the cover. All around the world, the pattern is the same. Terror organizations use women as useful human resources. Women are natural recruiters for the organizations, as they have children and can encourage other women to join the organization. For many reasons, women are preferred in terror organizations. For example, they can easily pass the controls in suicide or organizational actions because they attract less attention. That's not a random choice. The women have such a central role in the marketing strategy of the PYD, the central role of women in the image of such leftist organizations, terrorist or not, any kind of leftist revolutionary organization, uh, that's not new. That even brings us back to the Karl Marx original writings. Because uh, this kind of background ideology of Marxism, of leftist revolutionary movements, they always rely on some central role for women. Perhaps not in practice, but always in the marketing of such uh, organizations, such movements. And if you think about traditional Marxist socialism, you will come up with struggle not only against capitalism, but also against patriarchy, against tradition, which includes a woman as the homemaker, as a, you know, a very traditional family figure. But with the Marxist tradition, women became not only even just a breadwinner, but also a revolutionary fighter figure. So from that aspect, there is nothing new with this. With all these different Marxist organizations, we saw this from the, you know, Latin America to Europe to some Southern Asian organizations. With all these armed groups, women were portrayed as such, you know, such revolutionary fighters and strong independent beings. Women are victims on all sides. In mentioning the YPG, it promises women to get rid of tribal pressure on the household. It is interesting to note that those who join the YPG and the militants in the women's army are usually young and always single. These girls join the YPG to avo avoid getting married early and to be free from the pressure the families put on them. They are avoiding the traditional role of women in their society. As we know, in the tribal structures, women are in a weak position, but when they join the YPG, they feel strong with guns and fighter identities. The uniform and the gun give these women, who were previously nothing, a sense of power. But there's something new with the PYD, because when we look at the PYD or its umbrella organization, the PKK, uh, they are no longer Marxist as we used to understand them in 90s, in 80s, in 70s. There was some ideological transformation. After a while, the organization's leader, Abdullah Öcalan, he read new books in prison, mostly from Murray Bookchin, and he, he liked ideas about you know, communal life and ecology and feminism and such new concepts, they were new for Öcalan, and he embraced them and quickly the organization, the PKK, with its different branches from Iran into Syria, they also in a top-down fashion embraced this new conceptualization. And after this transition, the PYD and the PKK, they not only just relied on this Marxist understanding of independent revolutionary women figures, but also they found themselves in, in a suitable context. Because when you look at the fighting factions in Syria, what you saw mostly were some radical elements, such as uh, Daesh, such as Al-Qaeda affiliated groups. Their women characters were also, you know, they had a different look. They had hijab, and men were usually the important figures to be highlighted uh, in the scenes from these organizations. So in such an environment, the PYD found this vacuum to market itself to its European and Western, American, European, different kinds of Western actors as a secular, you know, very Western looking, pro-Western organization. And of course, first thing you do to look like one of them, in this case, one of the Western actors, showing women wearing in Western style of clothing, obviously not with hijab, obviously not reminding anything about the Middle East, looked like actually they were, they were strangers. In this, in this area. They are not Middle Eastern or even Kurds, as we would imagine them. You know, free, equal, egalitarian, like Amazon fighters group. 
On the one hand, there is propaganda, and on the other hand, there is the reality. Propaganda promises that women should make decisions about their own life, go to school, get an education, be in an equal position with men. Propaganda promises that women will have a free life, free from family, tribal, and social pressures. In fact, women's anger towards the tribes is being turned against the enemy state. Everybody knows that the propaganda promises are empathy. Women who join the YPG are not allowed to marry. The women who join the organization are young children who cannot make decisions for themselves and who are easily influenced and forced to do as they are told. Yes, it's true, women are equal to men, but only on the battlefield. Women are only equal to men in the grave. In fact, the YPG that usurped the female body is using it for its own propaganda. Of course, the men, the male fighters, militants of the organization, they outnumber women, but we don't see them on the cover pages of newspapers. We always see some pretty face with some flowers sometimes, you know, in the hair, the hair just, you know, airing in the wind. And it's like a movie scene. And this is quite inspiring. Not only for Kurdish people who have some problems with the you know, established way of life in their own hometowns, but also the people from Europe. They also found something new with uh, with the PYD. They thought, okay, you know, that they, they are one of us. They are just surrounded by these uh, barbaric tribes, these barbaric Muslim tribes. And it was quite fitting to the Orientalist visions of the Middle East. And there was some identity connection this way between the West and the PYD. I think that's, that's quite an innovative marketing strategy and they, that worked quite well. YPG militants in the Western media are portrayed as being very happy in their lives. But in the reality, all they have is war, chaos, blood, that. The depression these women suffer is not mentioned and the abuse they suffer is hidden in this report. Actually, they are poor victims and are only available as an armed militant who has potential to create terror. The YPG is supposedly opening up space for women through a co-chairing system in the organization. But this is not as it seems as there are no women in any decision-making processes. Orders are given from top to bottom, from men to women. The very top of the organization is Abdullah Öcalan, and the women in the organization are expected to give their life for him. The PKK started to use women as suicide bombers, deadly uh, mission. It did not start with the PYD. It's always been there. From the very first writings of Abdullah Öcalan, the leader of the organization, uh, up to this day, there are some breaking points. And in that sense, suicide bombers, female suicide bombers, they were one big shift for the organization. They experienced it in the 90s. And one of such figures called Zeynep Kınacı with uh, her code name Zilan, she blew herself up in Tunceli and she took down eight Turkish soldiers with her. She dressed like a pregnant woman and they did not suspect her. They did not do, you know, some checking for her. But actually she was not pregnant. She had bombs around her body. And right after that suicide bombing, there was a wave of bombing incidents. The PKK using women. But the thing is how they portray these suicide bombers, they call them, they liberated themselves. Not only themselves, they also liberated the women. Western journalists welcomed by beautiful, well-groomed, made-up European-looking women. Western media portrays female militants as representatives and defenders of freedom, equality, and democracy. There is an equation established here. The oppressive, backward, and patriarchal Islamic East on the one hand, and Daesh represents it, and women with libertarian, egalitarian, secular democratic YPG on the other hand. So again in quotes, the West is shown as the savior again. This time it's a free and egalitarian Western image represented through women's body. This actually legitimized the YPG in Western public opinion. The truth is that it is a terrorist organization that glorifies deaths and killing. But at the end of the day, what they do is no different from Dash. They just put some bombs around your body and they send you to death. At many times, in very, very early age, actually, if you just go through the recruits of the PKK or PYD in Iraq, in Syria, it doesn't matter, the same everywhere, they're mostly children. They joined the organization uh, at the age of 14, 15, 16, that depends, but very, very early age. And with this fancy word, like liberating the world, liberating your gender, breaking the tradition, ending the patriarchy, and bring the revolution, the YPG and the PKK claim to advocate women's liberty, but we know that there is a strict hierarchical structure, especially within the organization. Abdullah Öcalan, 
comes first. The leader is at the top and he is more available than anyone else. Women in the organization who protested for more power, independence in the past were destroyed, executed because they attempt to act independently. In fact, women are being harassed and sexually abused by the leaders of the organization continuously. This fact is ignored by Western media and they focus on image which appeals to the Western audience. In order to create a positive image in Western public opinion, women fighters and egalitarian rhetoric are emphasized. This is actually an orientalism and orientalist view at work. With their secular and modern appearance, they want to cover up the reality that they are a brutal terrorist organization which kills and maims and who brings deaths and destruction wherever they go. These women are being used as pawns between Western democracy and Middle Eastern culture. At the end of the day, those pretty faces that you see on the front page of your magazine, they won't stay alive for long. They will be sent to some Turkish troops or Turkish civilians, sometimes to Syrians in Syria, Iraqis in Iraq, as suicide bombers, and they will die. And this is what happens to them. We should get rid of this, you know, this image making. We should get rid of these perceptions and these marketing strategies. And beneath this crowded surface, there is a very ugly truth. That's a war. That's a war in Syria. That's a war in Iraq. And even further, that's terrorism. And these ladies, very young, ladies what they are doing actually like one of the very first examples Zeynep Kınacı did just killing some people that's it this is what they do they kill and there's nothing to glorify about that the only reason the western circles like this organization is that their women do not have burqa if you get rid of these images these makeups dressing codes they do the same thing they kill no matter what they pursue for at the end of the day they kill